Hello, welcome to Elaine Friend, International Consultant on High Sensitivity. This is my YouTube channel and a follow-up to my webinar, How Highly Sensitive People Can Thrive at Work. And my guest from the webinar is here, Monica Zimmerman. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. It's good to be here. We're doing a little follow-up on a couple of questions that came in during the webinar that we didn't have time to answer. So I hope you enjoy them. Here's our first one. I am a freelance ceramicist, so I can be in charge and in control. I'm both an artist and a teacher. I've held management posts, but I don't like the responsibility since being a parent is enough. I constantly feel that I know better than those who manage. I don't want to manage, yet I find it so hard to accept poor management. Oh, I hear her, do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> My question is this. How can I park my frustration with the way things are done and organized in my art studio complex? Good question, because I'll bet you anything, things are not well managed and organized in that complex if it's not an HSP in charge. <laughs> so Monica, I know that besides being a CEO and a business consultant, you're also an artist. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure that we address this question together. What are your initial thoughts here? Well, Regardless of being an artist or not, um, you're in a situation where you see it can be run better, more efficiently. You see where there could be changes made. You don't have the power to make those changes because you're not in that position by choice. So you can take two routes. I've been in this position as well. I've, I've gone two different ways. I've either consulted, coached, mentored up which they didn't even know was happening. We'd have a conversation. By the end of the conversation, they were doing what I want them to do <laughs> in a kind way. Uh, or let it go. Just let it go. You cannot, you can't not control. What's the thing you say about control and letting go of things you can't and the wisdom of the difference and that whole thing? Yeah. Accept yeah. the things we cannot change. Change the things we can and know the difference. And accept that that's just how it is. Not about you. Uh, but stuffing feelings, I never want to support or encourage or, yeah. you know, they have to come out somewhere. So they really do. And they will, you know, if you don't. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's it. Well, I mean, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. It's highly sensitive people, isn't it? That we are, we have strong emotional reactions. So they're going to be there whether we make space for them or not. And they tell us so much. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about this. I've also been, I mean, I bet you everyone watching this video has had some of these experiences where you're in a situation where you really do know what's better because that's one of our characteristics, right? That we walk into a room and we see how things could we be better. Same in a business. And I said this during the webinar, uh, when I worked in agencies or as a civil servant or all the different jobs I've had, I often got poor performance reviews. They would be like off the charts, doing great work, doing a lot, but does not play well with others and <laughs> does not respect management. <laughs> and, you know, the truth is that I did see what was needed, you know, what, what would be better. And so um, I think that there, I agree with you about the two choices, but so what if you just say, this is the way it is. I can't change these people then what do you do, I guess, is the question to take care of yourself in that situation. I mean, one of the things I did was, or that I've done in the past and recommended to clients in the past is to, um, you know, create a little bit of a safe haven for myself in the work environment, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one example is wearing headphones and listening to music or nothing, just wearing headphones so that people don't engage with me. So that, and so that I can kind of check out a little bit from the environment that I'm in and be a little more internally focused. Um, in the webinar, Monica, you made the great suggestion to uh, put stuff on your space that creates a, in your space or on your desk that creates a physical barrier, actually. I mean, it, it was not just physical the way you were describing it using family photos, plants. It's also, I don't know, it's sort of like making yourself feel good, but also creating some kind of a barrier to the outside space. But I really wanted you here because in an art studio, I bet you that this call, this uh, question or this member is um, probably teaching there as well. So how could she 
protect her space a little bit more. I just really don't know what it would be like there. And I know you do. Oh, uh, well, I could, it, you know, it depends on there's a lot of, there's a lot of complexities in the studio space. Depends on what kind of studio it is, how big is the space. But again, it goes back to what we spoke about in the webinar of um, self-preservation, self-care, and boundaries and limit setting. So you can't control everybody or anybody really but yourself. And again, I say that um, if you don't set boundaries for yourself, someone else will. So maybe bet more boundaries on your space. Maybe put a couple of, of racks in front of your wheel or your hand building space. Mm -hmm. uh, where people don't have such access to you. Again, I don't know the full meal deal of what's going on and the complexities because it's many layers. Um, but to really, you know, set some clear boundaries for yourself. Um, and if they're making policies that you don't agree with, um, challenge them in a kind way, in a compassionate way. So, well, no. <laughs> Why? You know, and if that, you know, maybe there's a way that you get together as a unit. I mean, there's so many ways to fix a problem. Yeah, and let's let's talk different. a little bit about dealing with the people who are running the complex or and this could apply to any job anywhere, dealing with the people above you. Um, some strategies for highly sensitive people. I mean, one thing that um, we often say is to make yourself valuable so that your opinion is appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, to set your own schedule, your own organization in a way that um, you just, you're in charge of it and then others see how well it works. But another thing that pops into my mind is this idea of questioning, you know, the kind of active listening thing and um, asking people who are doing the Okay, I'm going to be really judgmental here, so forgive me, audience, but ask the people who are doing the dumb things that you know could be done so much better what they're thinking, not in a judgmental way. And I always say this to parents, don't go, um, you know, fawn all over your child and give them the extra attention that you know they need when you're resenting it. So you have to come in prepared with a lot of self-care on, on board, right? But then you can just really take the time to sit down and get into those deep conversations that highly sensitive people are so good at and really find out where they're coming from. Once you kind of get to know where, my opinion, I know you have your own, Monica, I'd love to hear it. Once you get to know where the people who are making the decisions that you know could be better are coming from, where they are coming from, yes, that's good, um, then you can kind of know them a little bit better and find your little way in. You know, find your, your opening to say um, what your piece is. But I will say that the more you listen and question and hear someone's story, the more likely you will be able to find your angle and put your stuff forward. And Monica, I know you've written in your book, Modern Leadership, Creative Leadership for Modern Leaders, okay. that um, you have some suggestions for people in dealing with management or, um, you know, in kind of creating change or not just what managers need to do for their employees, but what people underneath the management need as well. Well, well you've, there's a two things you're speaking about is the, the, what was kind of in the book, what I spoke about and what we're kind of speaking about currently about the ceramic studio. And mm -hmm. I was going to go back to that really quickly and say that the person leading the studio or the art complex are, is, are, are you paying them to be there? Are they under, what's the leverage point? Are mm -hmm. they working for you in this space? That's a different leverage point versus, um, you know, them paying you to be there. So it depends on whose side of the payment you are in terms mm -hmm. of the leverage you have. Second of all, always have a third party in your meetings, no matter if it's a comp that, that ceramic complex or, you know, you'd work at a nonprofit. doesn't matter any meeting. Have a third party there to witness, to see, to take notes. Um, you have someone from Switzerland come in your meeting. <laughs> who's, <laughs> an ally, who's an ally. Yeah. Uh, it just, it, it enables both parties to be seen and heard. Um, and the pros, pros and cons of the conversation. I love that. I mean, also, you know, I think usually, especially in an artist complex, artists are often highly sensitive people. Yeah. Some of them might not know they are. They might not be doing adequate self-care. So they're kind of, you know, maybe not performing with their sensitivity at the level that they could or should. But I do think finding an ally who might even agree um, 
would be very helpful in any work situation. But it seems like, you know, we, I often say, find that other highly sensitive person, 20%. Unless there's only five people there, and since it's artists, I say even if there are five, there's pr only five, there probably is another person who's highly sensitive. And then I think the trick is to also find out their story so that it's not complaining and gossiping, but actually just finding out where, where they're coming from. You would be surprised who agrees with you. I, it's just astounding to me every single time. Yeah. Any other wrapping up comments that you'd like to make, Monica? Well, again, I like the four agreements. Don't take it personally. It's not about you. Do your best. And don't gossip. Yeah. yeah. When you put when I mean, you allow them to. And that's that book, The Four Agreements. I can't recommend it highly enough. It's, you know, it's not specifically about highly sensitive people, but you get the strong feeling that the author is a highly sensitive person because they thought so deeply about how to make relationships and communication work better. So I really I think everyone in the work world and the family world, well, probably everyone in the world would benefit from reading that book and practicing the four agreements. Mm -hmm. So I want to really encourage folks to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be sure that there's a link here, probably already up. And um, to come and find us at areyouhighlysensitive.com. This is my membership program where you can uh, become a member and participate in twice a month webinars talking about highly sensitive people and parenting highly sensitive children. So thank you so much for being here, Monica. And oh, you can find Monica at ZimmermanCircle.com. <laughs> thank you so much. On Amazon, feel free to go out and grab you one. All right. All right.